Lockdown discontinued. East Grand Bahama Fishing Program. Money Minute continues. This is Flipping Ground Bahama News for week ending June 12, 2020. I am Yasmin Popescu with these and more. Thank you for joining us. Flipping Ground Bahama News is a media limited production. If you see news in the making, call us at 727-6909. Or if you want to advertise, call 439-2493. Our salesperson is waiting. This is the first weekend of freedom since the lockdown and curfews instituted because of COVID-19. As we move into phase four of reopening of our economy in the Bahamas, we are now looking at the introduction of restaurants, cultural facilities, gyms, movie theaters, and entertainment facilities to operate with social distancing protocols inclusive of masks. These are expected to come into effect Monday, June 15th. Also, there will be the resumption of office operations with strict social distancing and personal services such as hair care and nails with PPE. On the social aspect, we begin with opening of educational operations with social distancing as the national exams are set to take place. Domestic travel began with screening and protocols, and group exercise or recreational with social distancing are in effect. Further opening is expected at the beginning of July. Travel being the bread and butter of the country, this week business persons in the Bahamas took part in training programs to get ready for the reopening of our borders. Tourism compliance training began this week, and by Tuesday, more than 1,000 persons had taken part to begin welcoming our guests back to our shores. During one of the sessions in Freeport, we got to speak to manager of the Grand Bahama Tourist Office, Stephen Johnson. Well, today is uh, part of the uh, um, tourism, tourism Readiness and Recovery uh, Compliance. Um, committee actually and what, what that is is basically this training is for um, persons within the travel industry being uh, be, be tall operators, uh, hair, hair braiders, vendors, um, waiters, everybody within the tourism industry is important for them to understand that before we open here in Grand Bahama we all need to be ready uh, for the July 1st uh, movement and so uh, and, and this, it was, I mean, the training has just been fantastic. We've had uh, a thousand online yesterday. We've had, uh, we have three locations where people can come physically in the morning and in the evening, and they're all being filled up. We have another session tomorrow online and uh, obviously in the classroom. And it looks like we're probably gonna have to do this again next week. It's been, uh, people are really excited to get back. I'm really excited to, to get them all of the tools they need uh, in this fight against uh, COVID-19 to keep everybody safe. On the question of returning tourism, he said. Uh, the Director General has informed us that in looking back at persons um, that are looking to book the Bahamas, it is very positive um, that these people want to come to the Bahamas. One of the number one reasons for them coming into the Bahamas is for beach. And so um, um, there's, there seem to be no concerns uh, so far about I mean, they know that the Bahamas has very low COVID rates. And in talking with some of the travel agents in Canada and the U.S., they are excited to come here to visit Grand Bahama and to visit the Bahamas in general. Um, obviously, they feel very comfortable with the Bahamas. And, uh, and that's a sure sign we have to represent uh, when they get here. We believe in Grand Bahama. The, we believe the niche markets that are going to come, come to us faster is going to be like diving, fishing, sporting. We have some of the best sustainable tourism opportunities here in Grand Bahama, the Lucayan National Park, uh, one of the, the longest underwater key systems in the world. We have one of the best stingray uh, uh, places uh, in uh, Sandy Key, outside, 30 minutes outside of West End. And uh, this is one of the number one stingray locations in the world, where this guy called Keith Cooper is basically uh, taking people out and uh, showing them what he does with these stingrays. And so, so much opportunities are available here in Grand Bahama. I think people want to come here and see. We already have brides coming to us, requesting information on getting married here uh, in Grand Bahama. And um, so, so some of the things that we're going to do here is going to be, uh, it's just amazing some of the uh, activities we have. 
Frenique Smith, a food vendor at the Freeport Harbor, commented on the seminar. The seminar is really informative. A lot of it are things that we've already learned and it's a good refresher now that we're very close to entering back into the environment of having tourists come into our islands. So it's very informative. There's a lot to take away. Um, I started to take some voice notes because there's sometimes that you've missed something but you can go over it and refresh yourselves again. And being a food vendor and I have persons that work with me, you know, we need to make sure that everyone gets the information. Mr. Zina Cooper, Vice President of the Port Lucay Marketplace then said, Well, the seminar is very in informative and it has a lot that we need to implement. You know, Bahamians are famous for hugging, and reaching out and now that is going to be difficult because of the COVID-19. Um, the guidelines that was implemented, it's going, to take a um, it's going to take time getting used to, but by the grace of God, we'll make it. Quite a number of boats have been repaired free of charge in McLean's town due to some very generous organizations since Hurricane Dorian. Friends of East Grand Bahama Fishermen, a collaboration of Global Medic, the Rotary Clubs in Grand Bahama Disaster Program, and OBS Marine are responsible for the repair of over 80 vessels in East Grand Bahama, putting some fishermen back to work. Speaking with Joseph Thomas, a resident who's assisting with the program, he said, Because you know 95% uh, of the fishermen has lost the livelihood, which is the boat. And this is a company from Canada that started this uh, program by the name of Global Med. Just, um, they, they, they did wonders, you know, in the, in the community. They started this, um, they was here like about for five months. And after they left, then I'm um, Rotary Club of Freeport, took it over with Mr. James Sauls and Ms. Liz. Okay, and I was spearheading this. Now, I didn't have almost, we didn't have over 80 boats pass through this program and that's that's amazing giving more information on what the program is all about okay what the, what the program does is um it it fix all of the fishermen boats in the community that was damaged by Doreen okay. free of charge which in like almost 98 percent of the fishermen lose their boat and that's the livelihood so that's what this program that they step in and um, um fix the boats free of charge Minimum, because the boat was damaged so bad, one boat you're looking at, if you had to get it fixed by one of the shops in Freeport, you're looking for minimum um, about two twenty five hundred dollars That's minimum. That's for the smaller boats with less damage. Now, we, we fix boats what would what, 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 what run into five six thousand dollars easy. Okay, so we've been had eight, about 80 boats uh, pass through this, uh, this program. And not only that, um, uh, the Rotary of Freeport, but along with uh, uh, Global Med, Bonefish Tap and Trust, the Rotary, and OBS Marine. They also f um, give um, X amount of engines, brand new engines, uh, to the fishermen, the bone fishermen, free of charge. He went on to say that fishing has been slow, especially for bone fishing lodges who depend on tourists, but they are looking forward to the opening of our borders. The people of East Grand Bahama, though few in number after Hurricane Dorian, are still receiving good health care. Health care in East Grand Bahama is reaching those residents heading back to all settlements as far as McLean's town. Speaking with resident physician Dr. Dennis Keanu, of the public hospital authorities for East Grand Bahama, he said. Before Dorian, we had working clinics in Freetown, High Rock, Pelican Point, McLeanstown, Sweeting Ski, and like I said, Grand Key. Well, I live in the area as well. Okay. So I'm on call 24 hours, seven days a week, except if I'm on vacation. After Dorian, all of the clinics have been devastated. This included, you've seen High Rock, the clinic there is gone. A few months ago, right before the COVID-19 hit, 
this was a non-functional clinic so if you passed by um, High Rock you'd see a trailer there that's also our mobile clinic most of the patients here bo uh, are on the range of the elderly so they're of uh, retirement age most of the time they're of hypertension diabetes chronic illnesses like joint pains arthritis things like that those are the ones that we see every day we have some once in a while we get like accidents um, we got um, a few cancer patients that, that we help with the pain management or just just with their other comorbidities nurse abigail mosade said she is also making the trips weekly to work in East since Hurricane Dorian. But post Dorian experience, so right after Dorian, we were working on the tent. Okay. The tent was set up by the IMC, International Medical Corp. So we were using that te uh, the tent up to now. Okay. So every Tuesday, we drive up here to do the clinic because before, prior to Hurricane, we usually drive up here for every Tuesday. Then also we stop by Pelican Point, we do clinic there. Then Friday we do also clinic in Freetown. Okay. So for now, post hurricane, we don't do clinic for the rest of the clinic except here, uh, except here in McLean's. Mm -hmm. Cause the clinic in Pelican Point and in Freetown, they all wash up. Each visit sees about 10 to 15 patients Per community. We're taking a break and when we return, a missionary taking on quite a feat and money minute. At Media Unlimited, we want to make you a star. We help you make your own video programs, podcasts, blog, vlog, press releases and more. Call for more information 727-6909. Welcome back. A contracting missionary is completing his work on the roof of a church in East End. Chris Ryder is continuing the work taken on by the Baptist on Mission started last November. I've been here since November. I, I came down here with uh, Baptist on Missions uh, to do an assessment in November and we looked at the church at that time and decided that we would go ahead and see if we couldn't help them uh, get a new roof back on it. So. We had some trusses made in uh, Freeport and uh, trusses were finished in December. I came back down and uh, brought them up here on site and been working with them on site ever since. So it's been a challenging time with the weather the way it was. Uh, we had quite a bit of rain and uh, windy conditions back in the winter time. We had a team came down the first week in January and worked with us some, and then later on we had another team came and uh, they worked for about a week also. And other than that, I've been here by myself. Uh, Baptist on Missions in North Carolina is uh, took this church on, and I think the other churches have been sponsored. The work is going on on the other church has been sponsored by other organizations. He then gave more on the mission. It's a charitable organization. It's a uh, is uh, run by the, the uh, North Carolina Baptist Convention. Okay. And the uh, uh, convention is uh, made up of several of all of the Baptist churches that are uh, member organizations. And they, uh, the churches support uh, Baptist on Missions. Baptist on Missions has an office in Cary, North Carolina, and they are a disaster relief organization. They uh, uh, follow hurricanes around and uh, other types of disasters, floods, and so on, and provide uh, whatever kind of relief is, is needed. But in the long term, they rebuild homes, churches, and, and so forth. His work comes to a close next Tuesday when he returns home. The local church of about 100 members is shepherded by Bishop Edwin Pinder, who Mr. Ryder said checked up on the progress of the church weekly. 
As the people in the East Settlements of Grand Bahama rebuild, they are also getting ready for this year's hurricane season. And to date, the power company is still trying to rebuild in that area. The struggle continues in the east of Grand Bahama as some residents remain displaced after the devastation of Hurricane Dorian last September. Into another hurricane season, some are still trying to rebuild and prepare for re-electrification. Speaking with Nikita Mullings recently from the Grand Bahama Power Company about the re-electrification of the east, she said, so the teams have completed High Rock, that High Rock settlement community. Mm -hmm. um, we have rebuilt and restored High Rock. We are now moving towards Pelican Point. Mm -hmm. Once we're done with Pelican Point, in about two weeks, we're going to head to Freetown. And the method of rebuild and restoration is we're going to begin or continue rebuilding and restoring where we're getting customer requests for power. And so what that means is we don't want to exert time and effort into the communities where we're not seeing any traction or rebuild um, because we would have raced, we wasted resources, time, um, and dollars. And so what we're doing is we're moving our crews or we're deploying the crews where we see there has been customer applications, approved applications for rebuild and construction, and then approved applications to receive power. Cleo Russell of the Communications Department then added, so basically, it's a just-in-time method that we're using for the rebuild for, for those areas. So prior to the storm, mm -hmm. we had about 300 customers from Old Freetown um, to Streeting Ski. And so what we wanted to do was to make sure that we're building the system back in a way where it's available when customers are ready for it. Yes. Um, because naturally, when you have only 300 customers in such a 21-mile radius or such a long line you need to rebuild, we wanted to make sure that we're utilizing our resources in the best way to maximize um, the most efficient way of our resources. Asked about plans for solar, Mrs. Mullings replied, so East End, we talked about we talked about um, rebuilding solar in East End. However, what we did realize was um, it would have taken additional time and additional costs and some engagement from ex from other stakeholders. And so that is the, still the long term plan. Um, but the short term plan right now is to go ahead and rebuild East End the old fashioned way. Um, an effort to get those customers back up and going as soon as possible um, because we don't want to have them without power lo much longer than needed. More residents are returning home before our borders are fully opened. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs released a statement early this week on those flights. As more Bahamians struggle to return home, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement this week advising that Bahamas Air relief flights for nationals and residents will take place during the month of June. These flights, the release said, will go from Fort Lauderdale to New Providence and Grand Bahama Tuesdays and Fridays effective today, June 12th until June 30th. The release noted that Bahamas Air website will have the necessary information. To be able to return, the residents have to take the COVID-19 PCR test with a negative result prior to departure. The result should be sent in advance to the Ministry of Health via Internet, along with residents' Bahamian addresses and telephone contacts along with email addresses. It was further said that relief flights are being organized from Haiti, Cuba and the Turks and Caicos Islands. As commerce reopens, business people are told via a statement from Ministry of Environment and Housing how to prepare. Commerce within the country is now fully opened and the Ministry of Environment and Housing has issued a statement asking all to remember the need to maintain social distancing as well as the use of face masks and frequent washing of hands. Now on the matter of shop space themselves, the statement said if the facility has been closed for seven days or more, there is no need to implement COVID-19 cleaning and disinfection exercise as current evidence suggests that SARS-CoV-2 virus does not survive on surfaces longer than that period. 
Normal routine cleaning is required prior to reopening. Custodial staff should be re-engaged to carry out required cleaning and preparation for occupancy. It then noted that the Department of Environmental Health Services is providing special training for custodial staff. The statement said that frequently washed surfaces such as tables, doorknobs, light switches, railings, telephone receivers, countertops, handles, desks, keyboards, toilets, faucets and sinks should be cleaned and disinfected often and that custodial and maintenance staff should document any health and safety concerns. We're taking another break and when we return, National, Regional and Money Minute. Flipping Ground Bahama News is a media limited production. If you see news in the making, call us at 727-6909. Or if you want to advertise, call 439-2493. Our salesperson is waiting. Welcome back. In national news, social services in the country is doing all it can to keep up with the needs of the people during COVID, but particularly in the islands that have been affected by Hurricane Dorian. Social services is overwhelmed with the work, especially after Hurricane Dorian, but according to the acting director, Mrs. Lillian Kwan Forbes, as she addressed the Citizens Exchange this week, they are striving with help from others. I'd like to say this, uh, coming from the social services perspective, um, we are still in Hurricane Dorian mode mm. because we still have two shelters running and I still have staff manning those shelters and still being able to provide for the needs of those persons who are in the shelters. We are also preparing for the upcoming, and we are now in the hurricane shelter and hurricane season, which started on June 1st. In addition to our regular persons who will receive food assistance from us on, um, by way of the Bank of the Bahamas um, prepaid um, visa card, or either through our food coupons, and all of our assistance is given just not in New Providence, but is given throughout the Bahamas. And so now here we have COVID that landed on us. And so then we had to figure out how is it that we are going to help those who are most vulnerable right. and especially too, and I keep on saying about the social distancing. And so we took into consideration to our persons with disabilities and our senior citizens. And so what we did was we opened another center and I, I shouldn't say open the center specific for this, but the center was already there mm -hmm. with our disability affairs center. And so we said to them to serve persons there who are vulnerable, who have disabilities, or who are older persons, and give them the food assistance from there, in addition to being able to get distributed from our four centers here in New Providence. And so that has been a help. Even so, too, my team has also gone out and delivered food coupons again to those persons who are our clients on our food persistence program. And they've gone and delivered their food coupons then just so that they won't have to be exposed again to the numbers of persons in the various centers where we are. And so that in itself, and also to being able to ensure that the persons who come to us by way of the front door um, are, are assisted. And so when you have COVID, you have Hurricane Dorian, and you have all of the other things that we are doing. You know, it, it, it is a demand, but hey, that's what we bought into. That is why we became social workers. That is why we got joined this profession. And I also say, too, that it also made us aware of the persons who are out there who are willing to partner with us. Right. And so even internally, you have Bamsi, who came to the table and who said, listen, we can provide fruits and vegetables for your senior citizens homes. We can provide it for your children um, residential facilities. And so that took something off of us as well, being right. able to tap into that. And then also two persons also being able to go to Bamsi and purchase boxes. Then too, we had a partner that came to the table with us at Bahama Blue and they offered us water. And so that has been something that they have been delivering for us. And we've been going and giving it out through different um, 
organizations or different charities. And so that has been helpful to those persons only because persons need water as well. Right. And then too, we also had a benefactor, Let Love Rural Foundation, Lenny Kravitz. He would have donated $50,000 for us to assist persons. And then specific to the Providence of Grand Bahama and the other islands, but also too, we then tapped into health and said, can you tell us who you have as patients or as clients who we can refer. So we had, we were able to spread that over to right. as many as we could. And then to they've come back to the table and say, he wants to do something specific to Eleuthera. And so that project is going on now to help the persons who are living in, in Eleuthera. So again, to you have a, a whole hmm, a variety of persons coming on board, trying to help us to make our issues a little bit easier. And, and, and holding our hands and we're holding their hands as well. Right? In the region, a tourism leader has lauded the coordination between many of the region's governments, the tourism industry and public health authorities, which use their experiences with natural and man-made disasters to minimize the effects of coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, and to strengthen Caribbean resilience. A release from the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association said that Frank Komoto, CEO and Director General, asserted that until a vaccine is developed, the Caribbean with its tourism-dependent economies has to face facts. First, our economies depend on visitors, and second, COVID-19 is not going away soon. So we have to do everything possible to minimize risk to both our residents and visitors while slowly reopening tourism. Komodo, whose association is a member of the COVID-19 Caribbean Tourism Task Force, stated that the Caribbean had effectively minimized the spread of the disease because the Caribbean health authorities, governments and tourism industry stakeholders were able to adjust and apply health safety protocols used to effectively manage risks in the past. He added that the Caribbean tourism sector was able to rebound strongly from adversity after developing resilience from experience such as hurricanes, 9-11, Zika, chikungunya, volcano eruptions, and earthquakes. We now take you to our seven-day weather forecast. Again, we bring you our new feature, Flipping Ground Bahama Money Minute. The first step to start saving money is to figure out how much you spend. Keep track of all your expenses. That means every coffee, household item, and cash tip. Once, once you have your data, Organize the numbers by categories, such as gas, groceries and mortgage, and total each amount. Use your credit card and bank statements to make sure you're accurate, and don't forget any. Tip, look for a free spending tracker to help you get started. Choosing a digital program or app can help automate some of this work. That's all for this week for Flipping Ground Bahama News. I'm Yasmin Popescu. Catch us again next week here on FlippingGB.com, on Facebook at Flipping Ground Bahama, on YouTube at Flipping Ground Bahama Channel, or on Instagram at Media Unlimited Bahamas. Do like, share, and subscribe.